العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم means so for us to deviate away from it is extremely dangerous and it opens the doors of shar and evil okay the closer we are to the Quran and the Sunnah the closer we are to Allah the closer we are to the Sunnah of the Prophet the way you speak even the way you give da'wah you can tell if you listen to the ulama and to the scholars of Ahl Sunnah to Jama'ah all the time and you give da'wah you're going to speak with their speech but if you listen to thinkers, people that are known as thinkers, I don't know why they're called thinkers. It's, are they the only people that think? Allahu A'lam. People who are called thinkers or activists even. Okay? We don't know what they're activating, but they're called activists. Okay? If you listen to these people, you will end up speaking like them. Just like people who give da'wah, who listen to... Um, some, you know, the du'at that are known for Hamas, that are known for emotional يعني, and, and screaming their lungs off يعني, when it, when it, and, and mentioning stories and qisas. They speak like in, in that way. يعني. It's not the, the way that the scholars, ulama, speak. If you listen to them all the time, you're going to end up speaking like them. Or those of them, or those of these people, yeah, and those of them who, when they recite a verse, مثلاً, they recite the verse in an eloquent way. Yeah, it's, yeah, and وما خلق, instead of saying وما خلقت الجن والإنس they'll recite the verse in a, as though they're reciting the Quran. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I don't want to give you examples. طيب. So that type method of da'wah, that person has, is clearly affected by the people that speak like this. So what I'm trying to say to you is that you have to be very careful. Always when you're giving, when you're seeking knowledge, you have to listen to those people who are considered al-ulama al-rasikhoon fil ilm. Ulama scholars that are rasikhoon, firmly grounded in knowledge. Because when you listen to them, you will speak like they speak. And you will, you will give da'wah like they give da'wah. And they speak with qala Allah, qala Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, uh, if you want your heart to be softened, softened, the only thing that your heart can be softened with is the Quran. How can your heart not be softened by the Quran? Some people, subhanAllah, they need to hear a particular recitation for, or they need to hear a particular speaker for their heart to be softened. That's, yeah, and I'm not saying that's, that's bad, but what I'm saying is your heart should be softened by the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Allah's words. They should affect us more than the speech of uh, people or individuals. So let's go back to the book, inshallah. Then he says, فَإِذَا عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ جُهَالَ الْكُفَّارِ يَعْرِفُونَ ذلك. So if you know that the juhal, the ignorant kuffar, they know this, فالعجب يعني they know the meaning of لا إله إلا الله فالعجب ممن يدعي الإسلام then the strange thing is it is strange to find someone who claims Islam وهو لا يعرف يعرف من تفسير هذه الكلمة ما عرف جهال الكفار وهو لا يعرف من تفسير هذه الكلمة and they do not know the the explanation of this word or the meaning of this word, ما عرف جهال الكفار, what the ignorant kuffar know. They are unaware of its, its meaning. And the juhal of kuffar, the kuffar who are ignorant are aware of the, of the meaning of la ilaha illallah. بل, in fact, يظن أن ذلك هو التلفظ بحروفها من غير اعتقاد القلب لشيء من المعاني. In fact, they think that uttering this word without actually believing in, in it, and without actually knowing its meanings, is enough. منهم, and the one that is considered to be knowledgeable from them, the one who thinks that he has some knowledge, يظنوا, they think that the meaning of La ilaha illallah is لا يخلقه, 
They mean they think that the meaning of the word is la yakhluqu he doesn't create wala yarzuqu he doesn't provide wala yudabbiru he doesn't um, sustain except Allah wahdahu so they mean they think that the meaning of la ilaha illallah is la khaliqa illallah meaning there's no creator except Allah and even now subhanallah even now there are many muslims that are ignorant of the meaning of la ilaha illallah all you have to do is uh, is, is is do your own research the mean, ask any Muslim, what does La ilaha illallah mean? The vast, the majority will not know the answer, the correct answer. They will think that the meaning of La ilaha illallah is La khaliqa illallah. They will think that the meaning of La ilaha illallah is La ma'buda illallah. So if we say that La ilaha illallah means La ma'buda illallah, there's, no cre- there's not <coughs> nothing worshipped except Allah, it's obviously wrong. There are things that are worshipped besides Allah. But are they worshipped in truth or falsehood? Falsehood. La khaliqa illallah. So the meaning of la ilaha illallah doesn't mean la khaliqa illallah. <coughs> There's no creator except Allah. Of course, Allah is the creator. There is no creator other than Him. But there was no disagreement between the, the, the mushrikun of Quraysh and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu with regards to who the creator was. So if the Prophet Muhammad was calling them to la ilaha illallah and the meaning of La ilaha illallah being la khaliqa illallah. If the Prophet Muhammad was calling them to la khaliqa illallah, do you think Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab would be disbelievers today? No. They would say, yes, we agree with you. La khaliqa illallah. But the Prophet was saying to them, la ma'buda bihaqqin illallah. The one deserving of being worshipped is Allah. Everything else you worship besides him is false. That's what he was saying to them. And this was where the problem was between them and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he says, فَلَا خَيْرَ فِي رَجُلٍ جُهَالُ الْكُفَّارِ أَعْلَمُ مِنْهُ بِمَعْنَى لَا إِلَى اللَّهِ There is no khair, there is no goodness in a man who claims to be Muslim, a man who claims to be Muslim, yet the ignorant kuffar are more knowledgeable than him with regards to the meaning of لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So, he mentions at the end two groups of people. What are the two groups of people that he mentions? Brothers. No. Close. The first group. Yes, yeah. The ones that don't know the meaning. Sah, sah. And the ones that do know the meaning. The ones that don't know the meaning. Who are they? And how does he describe them? What do they do? They just utter... Yeah, with their shirk. Naam. So they, they just say la ilaha illallah, but they, they don't really know what it means. So they say la ilaha illallah, and they say, Ya Abdul Qadir al Jilani aghithna. They say la ilaha illallah, and they say, Ya Tijani aghithna. They say la ilaha illallah, Ya 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 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya'ni madad madad, Ul'iyadu billah. They go around graves, they make tawaf around graves, okay, and they say la ilaha illallah. They, yani they, subhanAllah, when, when they are in sh- sheer need, you know, you've, you've studied Qawaid al Arba, sah? When, when they are in need and they really need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, they, they are in a calamity, who do they turn to? They turn to their aliha, they don't turn to Allah. So their, their shirk is aghlad min shirk al awwaleen. He meant, yani the shirk of the mutaakhirun, the shirk of the latter mushrikun is, is worse and more uh, destructive than the shirk of the awwalun, than the shirk of Quraysh. Because the Quraysh, when they were in a calamity, they would turn to who? To Allah. فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ But the mushrikun of today, when they are in a calamity, they turn to their mushrik, their, 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 mushrik, their, their aliha. When a woman, Methelen, who's barren, wants to, is asking for offspring, she goes to the grave and she sits on the grave, weeping. Yani in khushu, she's, she's weeping to the person in the grave. If only she, 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 she wept to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they are, yani, when, when, when it's the dry season and the land is barren, they don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَرَازِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ 
القائل وما من دابة في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها. They turn to whom? They turn to their آلهة سبحان الله. This is their shirk. So, um, so سبحان الله. This is يعني this shows us the importance of توحيد. نعم. Who had a question? نعم. طيب. Any any questions? Let's move on. Then he says, إذا عرفت ما قلت لك معرفة قلب. He says, if you acknowledge ما قلت لك, what I have just said, and what has he just said, sisters, what has he just said? What is it? What has he just taught us? What's the last thing that he said? Good. Naam. So, it's like this: the Sheikh, يعني he's 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 taking you from one logical thought process to another thought process. Okay. So you you have to follow the logic. Okay. إذا عرفت ما قلت لك, and look at how he speaks to us, Subhanallah, in such akhlaq and etiquettes, and he uses he uses the second person, يعني. He doesn't say. He doesn't use. He doesn't say. إذا عرف ما قيل لك. He says إذا عرفت. إذا عرفت. If you know what I have just said to you, it's like he's having a conversation with you. Okay. He says إذا عرفت ما قلت لك. If you acknowledge and you know what I have just said, معرفة قلب with your heart. Okay. معرفة قلب with your heart. And you really understand this with your heart. وعرفت الشرك بالله الذي قال الله فيه. And you acknowledge and you know a shirk and what it means. The shirk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the verse, in Allah la yaghfir an yushrak bihi wa yaghfir ma duna thalika liman yasha. So here the author, he is mentioning, um, he's basically mentioning four introductory statements. Just like in the last week, he's mentioning four statements that are an introduction to something that's coming. Do you understand? Okay. So the first muqaddima, إذا عرفت ما قلت لك. That's the first muqaddima. Okay. So if you acknowledge and you know what I have just said, معرفة قلب with your heart وعرفت الشرك. The second muqaddima statement is here. وعرفت الشرك بالله. And you acknowledge shirk in Allah and what it means. The shirk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَيُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكِ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ What does that mean, sisters? إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَيُشْرِكَ بِهِ That you associate? But he? نعم. But he forgives other than وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكِ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ But he forgives other sins. طيب. So here, um, uh, then he says, نعم. The third muqaddimah, he moves on to the third muqaddimah, which is, وَعَرَفْتَ دِينَ اللَّهِ And you acknowledge and you know the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah. الَّذِي بَعَثَ بِهِ الرُّسُلُ The religion of Allah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers to clarify. مِنْ أَوَّلِهِمْ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِمْ From the first to the last. يعني the first being who? Nuh, the last being the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. الذي لا يقبل الله من أحد دينا سوى the religion in which Allah does not accept from anyone other than it. This is the third مقدمة, all of it. Okay. Number four, the fourth مقدمة. So the first مقدمة is that you acknowledge with your heart what He has said to you. The second muqaddimah is you acknowledge and you know what shirk means. If you know what shirk means. The third muqaddimah is you really understand this religion and, and what it means. And the fourth muqaddimah, وَعَرَفْتَ مَا أَصْبَحَ وَعَرَفْتَ مَا أَصْبَحَ غَالِبُ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْجَهْلِ بِهَذَا And that you acknowledge that most people are ignorant of this concept. Most people, this is the sha'an, this is the sunnah of Allah in this universe. Most people, unfortunately, are ignorant of this. Afadaka fa'idatayn. This should give you, this should give you two benefits. This is the natija now. This is the result. Two, two results. 
الأولى أوكي سو واي ديد هي سي الأولى نو الأول نتيجة فائدة نعم أحسنتي فائدة أوكي بيكوز فائدة إز وات إز فيمينين أن الأولى إز فيمينين واتس ذا ماسكلين أوف الأولى الأول نعم طيب سو so, الأولى الفرح بفضل الله ورحمته that you are happy and this should give you happiness this should give you this should make you happy with Allah's fadl his bounty and his mercy كما قال تعالى Allah سبحانه وتعالى says قل say بفضل الله because of Allah's bounties وبرحمته and his mercy فبذلك فليفرحوا let them rejoice because of this هو خير مما يجمعون. This is better than the wealth that they accumulate. So this is the first fact. It should give you happiness. Subhanallah. What's better than knowing Tawheed? The greatest ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you is Tawheed. Al-Islam subhanallah. وَأَفَادَكَ أَيْضًا And it also should give you another benefit. وَهُوَ And it is الخوف العظيم. To fear to a great fear in your heart of losing this. فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ Because if you know that the person يَكْفُرُ بِكَلِمَةٍ يُخْرِجُهَا مِنْ لِسَانِ That the person يَكْفُرُ بِكَلِمَةٍ can disbelieve because of a word يُخْرِجُهَا مِنْ لِسَانِهِ that he utters with his tongue دُونَ قَلْبِهِ without him even knowing what this word means with his heart. وَقَدْ يَقُولُهَا And he may even say this word وَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ while he is ignorant فَلَا يُعْذَرُ بِالْجَهْلِ And he is not excused because of his ignorance وَقَدْ يَقُولُهَا And he may even say this word وَهُوَ يَظُنُّ أَنَّهَا تُقَرِّبُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَا And he may say this word and he may think that this word will keep him close or bring him closer to Allah كَمَا ظَنَّ الْكُفَّارِ As the disbelievers thought with the shirk that they committed what he's saying is that this should give you khawf. This, these four muqaddimat, these four introductory statements, if you acknowledge them and you really know them, then this should really put fear in your heart that you may lose this. Because if you have something expensive, something very valuable, you're going to try your best to keep a hold of it. Yeah, and the, you're going to try your best to keep it. So sh- tawheed is the most valuable thing. And especially he says that we know that a person can say something and this word could be enough for him to actually enter the fire and could destroy him. Okay? He says, خُصُوصًا إِنْ أَلْهَمَكَ اللَّهُ مَا قَصَّ عَنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Especially, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires you to learn what, what he has, the story that he has told us about the people of Musa alayhi salam, مَعَ صَلَاحِهِمْ وَعِلْمِهِمْ The people of Musa alayhi salam, although they were righteous and although they had knowledge, أَنَّهُمْ أَتَوْهُ قَائِلِينَ They came to him saying, they came to Musa saying, اِجْعَلْ لَنَا إِلَاهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا Make for us an ilah. When they walked past the people who were committing shirk and worshipping others besides Allah, the Prophet Musa alayhi salam's people, they came to the Prophet Musa and they said, اِجْعَلْ لَنَا إِلَاهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا Make for us an ilah. Make for us an ilah. كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا Just like they have آلِهَا فَحِينَ إِذِنْ If that's the case with them, and they were with the Prophet and a messenger at the time, and they had knowledge because the Prophet Musa obviously is teaching them, if that could happen to them, فَحِينَ إِذِنْ يَعْظُمُ خَوْفُكَ وَحِرْسُكَ عَلَى مَا يُخَلِّصُكَ مِنْ هَذَا وَأَمْثَالِ فَحِينَ إِذِنْ يَعْظُمُ خَوْفُكَ Your fear should become immense. وَحِرْسُكَ And your hirs and eagerness عَلَى مَا يُخَلِّصُكَ مِنْ هَذَا وَأَمْثَالِهِ should also become immense. And should become great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you from this calamity which is shirk and everything that is similar to this calamity. Let's go back. Full introductory statements. Okay? The first intro- introductory statement, he says, إِذَا عَرَفْتَ مَا قُلْتُ لَكَ مَعْرِفَةَ قَلْبِ And this ma'rifah that he's talking about is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to a people who um, affirmed Tawheed al-Rububiyyah and basically disbelieved in Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. So if you know this, and also if you know 
that of shirk, that you know basically the importance of shirk and, and the danger of shirk. So what is shirk? Shirk has two meanings. There's, there's basically, in the Islamic terminology, okay, shirk has two meanings. The first meaning of shirk is am is general, okay? And it is basically ja'lu shay'in min haqqillahi ghayrillah. The meaning of the general type of shirk is to give something that is from the right of Allah to other than Allah. Okay? So, methanan, I'll give you an example. Does anyone know what dhulm is? What's the definition of a dhulm? Opp- yeah, that's the translation, oppression. But what is it? Oh, to put out in place. To put away from place? Mm-hmm. Okay. To put what, sorry? Close. Uh, very close. Naam. Sorry? No. The sister was the close. Basically, what it means, dhulm, is to put something that... To put something in a place which it doesn't belong. Okay? That's what dhulm. وَضْعُ الشَّيْءِ فِي غَيْرِ مَحَلِّهِ Dhulm is to put something that doesn't belong somewhere in, some, in a place that it doesn't belong. So, if you put... Ibadah, to, uh, you give it to other than Allah. Do, do they, does ibadah worship belong to them? No, it only belongs to Allah. This is why Allah says, Inna shirka, ish. Inna shirka? Naam, la dhulmun azim. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. So, what's the definition of shirk, the tarif al aam? Ja'alu shay'in min haqillahi li ghayrillah. What does that mean? Naam. And al khas shirk also has a definition that is specific. And it is ja'lu shay'in min al-ibadati li ghayrillah. To give something from worship to other than Allah. Okay? This is khas, naam. The khas? Ja'lu shay'in min al-ibadati li ghayrillah. To give something that is worship to other than Allah. Okay? So that's the second muqaddima. And the greatest thing that a person should fear is shirk. Because it is the opposite of tawheed. The greatest thing that you should aspire to learn and to keep is tawheed. And the greatest fear that you should have is falling into shirk. It doesn't matter whether it's, it's minor shirk or major shirk. Number three, the third muqaddima is that you know the haqiqah, the reality of al-Islam. Okay? What does al-Islam mean? From those of you who have memorized sisters, from those of you who have memorized Surah Thalath al-Usul, ma huwa al-Islam? Uh-huh. Al-Islamu? Naam. Al-Islamu lillahi bit-tawheed. Wal-inqiyadu lahu. Bit-ta'ah. Ahsant. Wal baraatu min ashirki wa ahli. Okay, so that's basically what al Islam means. Number four, um, and that you know that most people are ignorant of this. Most people are ignorant of this. So this should then give you two benefits, fa'idatayn. Now the first benefit, as Allah says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ So what does فَضْلُ اللَّهِ وَرَحْمَتُهُ mean? Hmm? Nope. Fadlullahi, Ubay ibn Ka'b, he said, Fadlullahi al-Islam, wa rahmatuhu ish, al-Qur'an. Who said this? Ubay ibn Ka'b. Who is Ubay ibn Ka'b? Was he from the Tabi'un? Sahabi. He was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, he compiled the Qur'an, he wrote the Qur'an, he was one of the few companions who was given tasked with, uh, the, uh, given the honor of actually writing the Qur'an. What did Ubay ibn Ka'b say with regards to Fadlullahi wa Rahmatuhu? Fadlullahi al-Islam wa Rahmatuhu Qur'an. So Allah is saying, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ If you are going to rejoice, Allah says, if you are going to rejoice, then rejoice because of two things. What are these two things? Al-Islam wal Qur'an, because of Islam and Al Qur'an. And you know the word farah, Allah mentions it in in many places in the Quran. 
And some places Allah mentions farah in a, play, in a, in a praiseworthy context, such as in this, this verse here, praiseworthy context. And in other places, Allah mentions farah in a dispraiseworthy context, context, such as method and when he says, لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب إيش الفرحين With regards to the people of Qarun, Qarun became arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تفرح do not be happy because of this. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ إِشْ فَرِحُوا بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهَزِئُونَ And we'll cover that next week, inshallah. Then number, number two, he says, الْخَوْفُ الْعَظِيمُ Because the second fa'ida is that this should instill in you fear. Okay, this should instill in you fear because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَجُنُوبَنِي وَبَنِي أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ Who says this? The Prophet Ibrahim said to Allah, Oh Allah, keep us away from the worship of Asnam, from the worship of idols. Ibrahim at taymi he said, um, رحمه الله تعالى, in uh, Ibn Jarir, uh, in the tafsir of Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he says, فَلَا يَأْمَنُ فَمَنْ يَأْمَنُ الْبَلَاءَ بَعْدَ Ibrahim." Who, after the Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, is going to feel safe and secure from shirk? If the Prophet Ibrahim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him as qanitan, uh, inna Ibrahim kana ummatan, qanitan lillahi, hanifan, wa lam yakum min al-mushrikeen, these beautiful descriptions. He is saying, oh Allah, keep me away from the worship of idols. The same idols that he, uh, that he basically smashed with his bare hands. He's saying, keep us away from... So, if the Prophet Ibrahim is making this dua and he fears for himself falling into shirk, then we obviously in Babi Awla should also be fearful. When he says, um, so inshallah ta'ala, I'll just stop here inshallah. It's, it's five o'clock. Aqifu um, inda hadha. Next week, um, I won't be here next week, but the week after when I come, if someone could remind me inshallah, make a note, to continue from here, from the second fa'idah. Afadaka fa'idah tain. So the second fa'idah. I have to basically just mention a few points here in the second fa'idah. If someone could remind me after two weeks in case I forget, inshallah. Wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.